1993 was full of brand new, family-friendly Vegas entertainment. Located at Treasure Island was an epic pirate battle with full-size ships that could sink into Buccaneer Bay. The iconic show would become a highlight of the pirate-themed resort and casino, where guests' imaginations could take them on mysterious adventures. Real estate developer Steve Wynn opened his first major casino on the Vegas Strip, the Mirage, in 1989. Fantasy becomes reality when the Mirage appears on the Las Vegas Strip. Can I have a towel, Steve? For two years after the opening of the Mirage, he, along with architect Joel Bergman, tried to decide on a theme for another casino, located on the Mirage's parking lot. They wanted something that would enhance the Strip yet be exciting for everyone. They decided on Pirates. The new hotel, an extension to the Mirage, will be announced in 1991, planned to be called Treasure Island. To most, this is an invitation to an adventure larger than mine. To the rest, consider this fair warning. We're here. Newspapers and media at the time were promoting the Disney redo of Vegas, with one stating that cheap cigars and bare breasts were out, free hot dogs and roller coasters were in. Forget gambling, think family vacations. Vegas was desperately trying to change, and within just five weeks there had been three announcements for major resorts. The MGM Grand, the Luxor, and Steve Wynn's Treasure Island were all planned to open the same year. <laughs> You're really going. <laughs> and it's going to be cooking. And there are going to be things for the family and for children inside this place, for young adults. The 3,000 room resort with 36 story towers were made to make guest trips to and from their room as quick as possible, with the elevators located in the center. One aspect that was unusual for a strip hotel was that the hotel's entrance was located on the side of the building, right next door to what would make this resort even more unique, Buccaneer Bay. On opening day, the hotly anticipated area remained fenced up. People were highly anticipating what would await them inside. They would even climb to the third floor of the nearby Tam O'Shanta Motel and peek over the fence. Inside, they would see workers putting on the finishing touches of full-size pirate ships and a full pirate village. Everyone was asking one question. When does this open? Pirate battles, mystery, intrigue, romance, all of the fun and excitement that you associate with all those great old Errol Flynn movies are going to come to life at Treasure Island. The $430 million resort would be set to open in late October 1993. It was also a day that would become quite the adventure for one young visitor on a trip to Vegas with his parents. Wow. Wow. This is great. Can we live here? Ravi, you are going to eat, sleep, and drink pirates for the next two days. Is that enough for you? Come on, you guys. Let's go. A story that will become legend. Vegas and pirates seem to go perfectly together, with visitors coming to the area looking for that perfect treasure chest of shiny coins to take home. The inside of the new resort was dressed up in full pirate theming. Treasure Island became an instant success. It wasn't uncommon to encounter Steve Wynn. You know, uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a pirate. Oh yeah, me too. Or even Long John Silver and gain a secret treasure map. One that would attract the attention of some bad pirates. For treasure's real, and I'm real. Black dog and his scurvy band are right on my stern. They'd slit our gullets for just a squint of a sheer man. Not that your parents would believe you. Black dog, right? Brought out his knife and he tried to kill me with his <laughs> Was that before or after they turned you into Jim Hawkins? After. Treasure Island was a pirate hideaway where treasure was all around you. 
The highlight for those not gambling would be the pirate battle, located on life-size ships in a man-made lagoon outside. Visitors entering the resort would walk across a walkway between these two ships. The battle for Buccaneer Bay began with pirates hauling their treasure from their ship onto the dock at Buccaneer Bay Village, their home when they were not out plundering on the high seas. Careful, laddies. We didn't spend four months for sea, you the prince. Can we be dropping gold under the deck? Captain, British man of war passing scalp point. Bearing down on the starboard beam. Aye, Captain, she's fully rigged. Fourteen guns on her. Suddenly, a British ship the HMS Britannia arrives at the other end of Skull Point, its captain warning the pirates to surrender their treasure. A battle ensues, sending many of the pirates overboard into the rascal's and huge fireballs erupted from the village. Those watching could literally feel the heat on their face as they went off. After one good final shot from the pirates, the British ship would sink into the bay, and Captain Mark Stillsmith would go down with his ship. In Vegas, the pirates would always win. The ships featured in the show were the largest moving piece of scenery in the world at the time of construction. It required a team of dozens of iron workers, underwater welders, pipe fitters, and electricians to install the hydraulic, mechanical, and control systems required to convincingly sink the ship during the show. Combining industrial automation, oil drilling equipment, deep sea diving and hydraulics, a motorized roller coaster track moved the 28 gun ship into the cove. It required incredible safety measures for the pyro and their effects used to create the battle. A 725 horsepower hydraulic system pulled the ship under the man made waves in the million and a half gallon bay. The same system would then rise it again 20 minutes later to reset the show. For the very first 4pm show, thousands of people packed the area to see the pirates fight the British. So many in fact that it caused traffic to be blocked and the whole area to become overwhelmed with visitors trying to see the show. Or walk the plank! <laughs> The legendary story of the resort, on the very same day it opened, Robbie's parents would try to have a dinner in the resort at one of the restaurants. A person going by the name Long John Silver would trick them to babysit. Shipmates forever. Shipmates forever. <laughs> and it wouldn't be long until those bad pirates came again searching for his hidden treasure map. I'll be taking that map, and then <laughs> I'll be taking your life. Each free show would last 12 minutes and take place every 90 minutes, from 4 p.m. until 11.30 p.m. at night. It was reported to cost $32 million to develop, featuring 23 actors and tons and tons of pyro. Many reports stated this was the closest Vegas had ever come to channel in Disneyland. And they were right. The show was something else. The technical integrations for the show were created in conjunction with Big Show Consulting and Management, while the lighting package was created by DHA Designs, who had recently worked on the volcano over at the Mirage. By 1998, it wasn't uncommon to see thousands of tourists waiting for the next show, often blocking the roads and pathways surrounding it. 
By 1998, the show had been performed over 7,000 times, had used more than half a million pyrotechnic devices, and been seen by more than 16 million people. The show even featured its own merchandise sold within the resort and became a staple for people of all ages visiting the Vegas Strip, with a now estimated 4.5 million guests watching per year. The goal was that this exciting show would bring people to the front of the hotel and in turn draw them in to spend more money. Right before the grand opening, Robbie's parents would get concerned when they couldn't find him. Luckily, a security camera would catch him fighting the pirates during the live show. Many watching thought this was part of the act. The actors in the show were left confused. I say, sir, who are those ruffians off the starboard bow? Ruffians? Those guys. Luckily, after the ship went down, he would be able to escape through the mouth of the skull, heading towards its treasure. Into the skull's mouth. Wow, this is great. Through the skull, he journeyed through a tunnel using the treasure map and a secret code on the elevator he found himself in. An elevator that was located inside the Dunes Hotel. Another property of steamed wind, it was scheduled for implosion of the very same night that Treasure Island would open. In just about 15 hours, this building, the once grand Dunes Hotel and Casino, will be demolished in what's billed as America's most spectacular architectural implosion ever. Robbie and the person calling themselves Long John Silver would be inside this hotel moments before this would happen. They did, however, locate the treasure, and shortly after, the bad pirates would come and attack. Long John Silver and the pirates would battle it out for the treasure just moments before the building was destroyed. Luckily, Robbie's dad, who had been a skeptical of the family-friendly fun of Vegas, realized where he had went and came in saving the day. We have to go, Robbie. We have to go. Letting them escape merely seconds before Steve Wynn pressed the button to destroy the building. Robbie's dad had learned a hard lesson. Vegas was about mystery and family fun, and he would not stop talking about the adventure that had happened at Treasure Island. Actually, that whole story about Robbie and his parents was filmed for the hotel's grand opening as a TV movie that premiered with the resort called The Adventure Begins. Come on, Robbie, time to shove off. Say, mate, you still like pirates? It was sold in the resort, and sadly, didn't happen really at all. What was true, however, was that the Dunes Hotel was imploded on the same day Treasure Island opened. Thousands attended to see a hallmark of the Vegas skyline for four decades come down. The captain of a ship in Buccaneer Bay fired a cannon at the dunes to end the countdown, and the explosions began. It was later replaced by the Bellagio. The Buccaneer Bay battle became a staple for families visiting the Vegas Strip. However, over the decade after its opening, family-friendly Vegas had failed. In 2000, Treasure Island and all of Steve Wynn's hotels were sold to Kirk Corian and MGM. The resort concluded that the heavy pirate theme did not appeal to people coming to Vegas to gamble. They began a renovation of the resort, and little by little, much of the pirate theming inside was removed. In 2003, Treasure Island's major revamp to focus the resort at adults would be complete. Treasure Island president said they evolved from a yo-ho-ho feel to a more sophisticated feel. The Disneyland-style pirate show after 10 years would end on July 6, 2003, after over 16,000 battles. The resort stated it would be changed into something that was sexy and beautiful, an adult-style Broadway caliber show. The pirate feel would remain, but now they would add spectacular, sexy dancing, as the resort called it.
The new version of the show debuted on October 26, 2003, exactly 10 years after the resort originally opened. Called Sirens of T.I., the first public performance had a crowd of over 5,000 watching the new 28-minute production, once again stopping traffic nearby. The new $2 million show featured more singing and dancing. The location had moved from Buccaneer Bay to Sirens Cove, where 13, underdressed sirens sang and danced their way through a battle with 11 pirates. It was now full of not so great innuendos to highlight how TI was now for adults and not family friendly. Many of the people watching outside however still included children. <laughs> I mean, the resort did describe it as a sensual, modern interpretation of the Battle of Buccaneer Bay. The new show opened with the siren leader, Sin Amun, narrating a warning about their power over the sea. Soon after, the adventuring pirate Eros boards the siren ship, the Song, which was previously the pirate ship in the original show. He is captured before Mac and the pirate crew from the Ball, the former HMS Britannia, sail into Siren's Cove to rescue them. After firing on the sirens, they summon a storm to engulf the ball and sink it to the bottom of the sea. As it sinks, the crew abandon the ship before Eros is forced to walk the plank. When the pirates realize they are no match for the sirens, they surrender, and the deck of the song turns into a dance party. The new show was directed by Kenny Ortega. Stunts and pyrotechnics remained. It was more of a musical show than a stunt show. The new show's reviews were not so great, with some saying it was boring and it was very stupid. I was stupid. I was really stupid. And had too much singing. In 2004 and 2005, it was voted as the worst local attraction by the Las Vegas Review Journal. Other media outlets recommended visitors avoid the show as it was a dumb show and a pain to watch. When asked why the show was replaced, T.I. said that the former show was a Vegas icon, but it wasn't really attracting the quality of customer they wanted. We created a show that better sells T.I. and that underdressed sirens would bring those visitors in. Five years after the new show debuted, the street leading into the hotel was renamed from Buccaneer Boulevard to Sirens Cove Boulevard. The show was also shortened to 18 minutes in 2005. This new version remained for another 10 years before it was announced that it would temporarily close on October 21st, 2013 until December 26th. In late November 2013, Treasure Island announced the show would never return. Some of the space would be used for new shops and eventually house the Avengers station. Many cast members expected it to return and were shocked to find the show was no more. It was estimated that it was costing the resort around $5 million a year to operate and it was decided more retail would bring in more money. The new shopping area would reduce the size of Sirens Cove by around one third. The iconic ships would remain but would now be stationary. No pirates would battle anyone in Buccaneer Bay for the first time in 20 years. Today, the ships sit outside the resort and the cove features several water fountains to make it look pretty. The transition from the former Disneyland quality show to the new version really summed up the change that was happening all over Las Vegas. Trying to remove the family-friendly destination 
and go back to what they were known for, gambling. Much of the uniqueness of Treasure Island was removed, and it slowly became just another resort on the Vegas Strip. The Battle of Buccaneer Bay was an icon for the Las Vegas Strip for two decades, and it was hard not to be impressed as you saw the captain go down with the ship and come back up again. In 1993, the industry was making a leap with new types of entertainment such as the sea battle at Treasure Island, Luxor's 50 million film attractions, and the MGM Grand theme park. For many visiting Vegas, it was said that this year was like an early Christmas Eve with so much entertainment for the family opening that each time it did, it was like getting a better and better present. Today, nearly everything that was added is extinct. For those visiting Treasure Island in its early years, many left learning that the real treasure was in their imagination. Adventure was what it was all about. Hey Robbie, remember, the real treasure is in your imagination. Okay, fine. That last line is from the TV movie. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Extinct. We are not done yet with Family Friendly Vegas, so make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes, and a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time.